Hello students, welcome you all to the next session on discussion of uh, joining processes. So in your syllabus, you have a topic known as joining processes. So in your daily life, you have seen uh, many of these things, many of the things it may be a table, chair, furniture, windows, or any models if you have seen, they have joined by one or other means. So if you see here in the picture, you can see this is a railway line which has been joined with the help of some uh, bolts or you can say some uh, rivets. Then if you see a pipe, it says it is a gas pipe. It is uh, these two pipes are joined with the help of a hot flame like structure known as uh, brazing. And this already we have seen many workshops, especially for building of uh, the cupboards and many applications. We are doing this process known as a welding. This we have seen, especially in our television uh, repair workshops, where a person is working on a board to, uh, and melting some hot wire, we call it as a PCB board, printer circuit board, that is a soldering. And uh, this is uh, a riveting process. So, more or less, what you can say that. Uh, Metals, they can be joined by various processes. It may be in the form of welding, riveting, bolting, raising, soldering. And by using these methods, sometimes you may get a permanent joint. It may be a temporary joint. And these joining processes, we are doing them based upon their uh, material properties. Along with that, uh, their working temperature zones, their hardness, thickness, and based upon applications, each type of welding process is used for a particular type of a metal and for particular applications. For your syllabus, you have welding, brazing, soldering. So we shall start with soldering, then go for brazing, and the last we will come for welding. So here in the sketches, if you see, this the working on a PCB board that is printed circuit boards. We call it as a, a process known as soldering, joining of the gas pipelines, especially for the materials made up of the copper, copper based metals or aluminum based metals. We are preferring the brazing process, and except this maximum process, we are carrying out by the welding process itself. Now, what do you invest soldering? So as just now we have seen that. Uh, the soldering when we are carrying out when there are two very thin metal pieces almost the thickness is very very less thin metal pieces or you can say thin metal sheet in that cases we are preferring this process and how we are joining them we are joining them with the help of a application of it so the two metal pieces which you want to join them there at the joining place we are heating them with the help of an a device of a material known as a solder. This is a material which is responsible for joining them. We call it as a filler material. And this solder material, it is a thing, but it is an alloy of lead and tin. Keep this in mind. So many times the question is asked is, uh, name the composition of a solder. Or what is an alloy of lead and tin? It is a thing, but solder, which is a filler material used in a soldering process to join the metals. So the metals which you are using them, they should be, the thickness should be very, very less or you can say them as thin metal pieces. Why we are preferring this one is, if you observe this point, we have said that this process is possible only when the temperature is less than how much? 450 degrees Celsius. So for the materials whose melting temperature is less than 450 degrees Celsius, you can say that we are preferring the soldering method. In addition to this, we are also using another one, chemical known as zinc chloride, which is a thing but a flux. Let us see how we are carrying out this soldering process. So if you see here, observe here two pictures. At the side picture, I have given a photographic view regarding the application of the soldering process. If you see here, this is a printed circuit board. You have seen in the televisions, transistors, radios everywhere. And if you see here, the operator who wants to uh, join these uh, points, he is having a pen-like structure. There is a, a needle at the point, which is a pointed tip. 
and at the one end he is having a small wire when he puts a wire at these two points and he melts this one to join them so what does this mean is this printed circuit board which he is using it is a thin metal piece and here if you see these dotted like structures that they are nothing but they have to be joined then only your transistors and television sets they are under working conditions now if you see the side picture this we have shown regarding the principle and method of soldering how it is carried out first of all what we need the components you can see here we are using a, this is a circuit board this is a soldering gun it is called it as a solder gun then this is a solder wire with which you need to join the metal pieces and here we are using some flux material also so how are the steps which are carrying out here so the first step is cleaning of joining surfaces what does this mean so when the two metal strips which you have taken for the joining process before we go for joining we are cleaning them because on the surfaces which you want to carry the joining process there may be some dirt dust or any other particles may be settled if we won't remove these particles then the joining becomes incomplete or in other words you can say that the process is not perfect hence to avoid that first we are cleaning the surfaces to remove the dust dirt or any particles which are stuck to the surfaces which have to be joined second step is application of a flux so in the previous slide i was saying that we are using a chemical known as flux so for our soldering process the flux used is zinc chloride what is this flux and why we are using this one so if you see here in the picture where we want to carry out the joining process at those positions and along with that metal surface also we are applying the flux because the joining of the surfaces how it is carried with the help of a the application of heat so when the heat is applied to surface of the metal plates which are to be joined then there is some oxidation process due to that oxidation process sometimes the joint develop it is not perfect you may have some defects also hence to prevent that oxidization we are applying the flux we are applying the flux zinc chloride to surfaces where you want to join them such that the oxidation processes can be prevented then the third step is tinning of surface tinning is a thing but application of the flux itself but in a gently manner polishing the surfaces very correctly to which you have to go on applying at a point where you want to join the metal strips then you are bringing the solder gun that is the tip to the point where you want to join the metal pieces you are using the filler metal that is a solder wire and once this metal tip is been heated the heat of this metal tip of the solder gun it is touching this wire and this wire melts and flows between these two metal pieces in the form of an capillary action so the melting material that is a solder it is in the form of an, a small a liquid structure which is flowing by the means of a capillary action between the two metal pieces to form a temporary joint and once the process of joining is complete then the remaining things one unwanted uh, particles which are present on the surfaces we are removing them and we calling them as a procedure known as final clean up so the joint which is performed in the soldering process you cannot say it is a permanent joint it is a temporary joint why because it is carried around a temperature less than 4 degrees celsius if uh, when you are using in the devices sometimes many times you have seen that due to sudden voltage fluctuations suddenly the electronic devices which that is the televisions or the radio sets they come they are malfunctioning why because whatever the joint was done it has been melted or it has been failed so that is the reason that you cannot say it as a permanent joint it is a kind of an temporary joint itself now let us see the advantages of soldering so if you observe only the materials what we need here is we need a solder gun we need a solder wire a flux so it it requires it is a process which is having a low cost and anybody can easily use at home so these joints as we are carrying for the metals whose thickness is very very less 
so sometimes at the home also you you yourselves you can repair or do reworking also so i was telling you as we are carrying out the joint for the temperature less than 450 degrees celsius you may say that it is not a permanent joint so maximum time it is how much one year for a year this joint is carried then as the temperature required for melting is less than 450 degrees celsius so the energy required is also very very less only the thing is you have to heat the solder wire and then with the help of capillary reaction you have to move that solder between the two surfaces which you want to join them so that plays a very important role so at that position regarding moving of the solder gun over these two surfaces an experienced person is required such that equal distribution of solder is done on the both surfaces which means you will get a good and a perfect joint that is the reason that the fifth point is explained we need an experienced person where high degree of control is required along with the advantages you are having some disadvantages also one is it is unsuitable for heavy sections so i was telling you that as the temperature is less than 450 degrees celsius so you can join them only for the thin metal sheets if they are having a high thickness you cannot carry this process temperature is limited and even the joint performed is not a permanent joint it is a temporary joint and its strength is little bit lesser in nature these are the things with respect to soldering let us move to the next topic brazing so here also if you observe in the brazing it is also a method of joining similar or two dissimilar metals itself using a fusible alloy but here the melting temperature is more than 450 degrees celsius the melting temperature of filament rail is more than 450 degrees celsius keeping in mind that which base metals you want to join the temperature should be less than the melting point of the base metals so what it means here is if i want to join two these two metal pieces the temperature should be less than the melting point of these two metal pieces no doubt it should be more than 4 degrees celsius but it should be less than the metal pieces you want to join them so in the previous section i was discussing that for a soldering process you need a solder which is a filler material here the filler material is nothing but a spelter this is also a alloy which is nothing but made up of a non ferrous metal or some alloys so normally the filler materials which you are using them they are made up of uh, copper copper based alloys silver and silver based alloys or some time even you are using aluminum or other alloys also so these filler materials we are using based upon the base metals such as if i want to join the copper pipes i will go for the use of this uh, copper based alloys itself as an filler material if i am using some aluminum based structures that is the base metals then i am preferring aluminum as my filler material and sometimes if I, there are silver metals yeah, i prefer this as my flux material that is silver and silver alloys so here also we need a flux to prevent the oxidation process the flux used in brazing normally it is the borax itself sometimes along with borax we are using even some uh, iodine salts also in small quantities that is the halogen salts of iodine chlorine bromine we are using that is in small quantities depending upon which type of base metals you want to join them but maximum cases we are using borax as a main flux for carrying the brazing process let us see the working procedure so here also if you observe this sketch you can see here this is also the same type of process that is we have seen for a soldering only a thing is here the base metals they are little bit much thicker when compared to the soldering base metals and the melting temperature of the solder of the filler metal which are using that is a spelter it is more than 450 degrees celsius but it should not melt this base metals this base metals so here also we are following the same steps as i was discussed in soldering that is first cleaning the surface of the parts the parts we want to join them we are cleaning them carefully then uh, we are applying the flux at the points where you want to join them such that uh, during the joining process if there is some oxidation we need to prevent that oxidation process that is oxidation has to be prevented that is the reason that we are applying the flux 
normally we prefer the borax or along with borax there is a mixture of boric acid is also used then once the flux is used the next thing is we take a torch tip where a heat is developed and in the torch tip the filler metal is there it is a spelter this filler metal you can see from this end already we are carrying the joining process you can see as the heat of the torch is given to this filler material it starts to melt and the filler material is dragged slowly over these surfaces by the help of a capillary reaction such that the filler material gets melted and joins these two surfaces so the capillary action is a thing but it is done slowly by heating the torch tip to melt this filler material and carry this joining process to end at this part so this is also similar to the soldering process itself only other thing is the base metals are different the spelter is different that is the filler metal composition is different flux is different except that the remaining procedure remains the same itself so as you go on uh, moving this filler metal to this end the torch tip melts the filler metal and by capillary action uh, it is distributed between these two surfaces to carry a joint now <clears throat> the joint formed in uh, the brazing process uh, when compared to soldering it is much stronger it is much stronger it is much stronger or you can say that the durability or the life span of this joint is more when compared to the soldering process normally if you go for the applications especially in the gas pipe industries or the metals which are lighter in nature that is the copper copper based alloys aluminum alloys silver alloys there we are preferring this type of uh, metal joining process that is uh, the use of uh, the brazing process so here in the picture this job the joining process we are carrying for which one the bronze metal there are some uh, different brazing metals also as i am telling you generally we are carrying out for the lighter uh, type of materials here the first one if you observe is the torch brazing process so here if you observe in this picture there is a metal plate <coughs> upon this there is a cylinder it may be aluminum material and we need to join the cylinder to the metal piece so the joining cannot be done very easily so at that time what we do is here at this place which you are seeing here we are placing the filler material and this is a torch gun where two gases have been passed one is the oxygen another one is the acetylene these two gases together develop a strong flame its temperature is so much higher that at the filler metal where it is placed here with this flame the fill, it is moved over the filler material the filler metal material melts and forms a joint between this cylinder and the metal plate so this type of method where a flame which in the form of torch is used for joining the metal parts so we call it as a torch brazing second induction brazing so induction normally you know induction is thing but we are developing a high resistance with the help of some electronic circuits so if you see here there is a pipe already at the center of this pipe we want to develop some joint so it cannot be done very easily so what they are doing is there is an induction coil they have taken this one between this induction coil there is a metal pipe being inserted and within this induction coil a high frequency current is passed from a range of 5 kilohertz to 5000 kilohertz the heat is so much sufficient that at the junction point of these two pipes here at the bottom the red color structure what you are seeing here at the junction of this vertical pipe and the horizontal pipe there what they are applying is the filler material so the heat passed in the induction coil heat developed in the induction coil it is so much higher that the filler metal melts at the junction of these two pieces and the two pieces are joined to form a joint so normally the induction coil is used whenever we want a resistance current in the form of pass through and induction coil itself so the type of brazing we call it as induction brazing third furnace brazing so in the industries there are some metal parts which we want to continue the brazing process on a large quantity we call it as a batch production 
So in the bottom picture, in the photography, you can see here there are some metal parts which you want to join them here at these points. So if it is single piece, you can draw it slowly. But in the industry, this has to be done on a large basis. So at that time, we want to supply more amount of it to the entire workpiece itself. So initially, what we do here in the above picture, if you see here, they have shown a production line. So here, there are two metal pieces which you want to join them. At this junction point, if you have seen, there is a, a filler metal is being placed. Now, this entire setup, it is uploaded upon a conveyor belt. So this conveyor belt, it is moving from this direction that is left to right hand side. So this is the first position of the filler metal which is being placed between these two metal pieces. As it moves to the second position, if you see the second position, this entire setup where it comes inside a furnace. Inside a furnace, there is so much heat that that heat is sufficient only to melt this filler material. So once this filler material melts, it itself joins between these two metal pieces and then it comes out of this furnace. So you can see the third picture that is, there is a joint. So for a batch production where the joining has to be carried on a large quantity, we are preferring this process known as a furnace brazing process, which you can see in the below photo also. Fourth one, resistance brazing. So if you observe in the resistance brazing, you can see there are two electrodes, water cooled electrode, counter electrode, then there are two work pieces. They are joined with the help of an electric circuit. And between this one, there is a filament material placed. So then if you're seeing the picture itself, it can be understood that the heat required for melting the filament material, it is developed by the use of this electronic circuit, such that when these two work pieces, they get very much heated, then even this filament material gets heated up, it melts and joins between these two work pieces and forms a joint by the heat developed from these electrodes to this electronic circuit. That is the resistance of these two electrodes. That is the reason that we name this type of brazing as resistance brazing. Fifth one is the dip brazing. So if you observe in this picture, see initially there is a component, this is a raw material, and we need to join these two parts. So every time in the industry, you cannot go on joining them. So normally what they do is, there is a bath structure, there is a tub, a large container. Within this container, there is some molten flux, that is a salt bath, you can say that one. And within this, the metal piece, it is dropped. And the two parts which they have to be joined, they're applying the filler metal and they are dipping inside. So the temperature of the molten flux and the filler material due to the melting, they are these two pieces, these two pieces you can see by the application of this filler material in the liquid condition, it is joining these two surfaces. And when you take out this metal, you can see it forms a single component. The two parts they have been joined. So this type of brazing where the materials are dipped in a large container to carry out the joining process, we call it as a dip raising. So some of the advantages, if you observe the advantages, when compared, it is easier to learn, you can join similar or dissimilar metals. The bond line is very neat, aesthetically means uniform joint is developed. And as I told you, the joint strength, it is strong enough and compared to the soldering process and you can use for even heavier applications also. But the same thing is, you cannot use for some metals, we can use only for copper, copper based metals, aluminum based metals, alloys, which are lighter in nature. Disadvantages, these joints, they are damaged under high temperature, high temperature in the sense, I was telling in the first session itself, if the temperature is going above the melting point of those base metals, automatically the joints get melted. Second thing, sir, it decreases, it needs a high degree of cleanliness. Yes, if the cleanliness is not maintained, the flux is not applied correctly, then it leads to oxidization, which means it may lead sometimes even to the failure of the joint also. And the joint color, whatever it is developed, it is different from that of the base metal. Yes, it's true, because the base metals which you are using, they are different in nature. So that is the reason that sometimes even the joint color, it may be different in nature also. 
So these are the things we need to know when you are learning regarding these things.